Hello, this is my computer. Do you remember how many different types of chargers old phones used to have? Each manufacturer considered it their duty to release a proprietary connector. It was hell let loose. The modern world is striving for unification and simplification. Why connect headphones via an inconvenient cable if you can transmit sound via Bluetooth? Why do we need so many connector types if they can be replaced by one USB-C? Using one cable to charge both a laptop and a smartphone, as well as stream pictures from a tablet to a TV, that's convenient. This is the future the tech giants led by Apple are moving towards. But, as it usually happens, something went wrong. Seemingly the same connectors can work differently. And it's not to mention the fact that we live in a world where physical compatibility does not mean software compatibility. How did that happen? How will the protocols and interfaces develop in the future? That's what we're going to talk about today. This is my computer. Let's get started. Let's start perhaps with USB-C. Initially, the idea was great. We will replace the obsolete one-sided micro USB, which is also quite unreliable, and all of the rest of the connectors with just one small port. Via USB-C, you can connect monitors, cameras, fast SSDs, headphones, and even external GPUs. It can feed 100 watts into your device, and in the future, 2,500 watts, which is enough even to power a gaming laptop. This is truly an all-in-one connector, except for one huge problem. By default, it works just as USB 2.0. This is exactly the way it was when it first appeared in 2014 in the Nokia tablet. All the possible bells and whistles of the USB-C remain only at the discretion of the device manufacturer. And this completely kills all versatility. Here, let's take a look at the regular full-sized USB, aka USB-A. You can take any modern USB stick, keyboard or joystick, easily connect them to a motherboard from 20 years ago and they will work without any issues. Yes, of course, the speed will not be so good as it has increased by hundreds of times since then. But nevertheless, the device you connected will work at 100% efficiency. And this is true in both directions. You can connect a USB mouse from the 2000s and it will work just fine with a modern PC. In other words, for more than 20 years, the USB-A connector has maintained and continues to maintain full compatibility and versatility. And that's cool. Can we say the same about USB-C? Not even close. For example, you can connect a monitor to many expensive Ultrabox and laptops using this connector. But as soon as you connect a cheaper laptop, it will disappoint you by showing no signal on the screen. Why is it like that? As I said, the capabilities of the USB-C port completely depend on the device manufacturer. A several thousand dollars MacBook can even have an external GPU connected to this port, let alone a 4K monitor. However, if you run a Windows laptop for half the price, there is a chance that the USB-C will work, just as USB 3.0. And what's worse is that it's impossible to determine how it will work by just simply looking at it. Picking a random USB-C laptop can only guarantee you that it will support flash drives. It will be possible to find out about the charging and picture output capabilities only by actually connecting the device in question, which is simply unacceptable for a mass universal connector. Therefore, it becomes clear why USB-C has taken root massively only in smartphones, while the PC and laptop market is rather slow to adopt it. Although the port will soon turn 10 years old. Why do we need this port in mobile devices? In 99% of cases, for charging and connecting to a PC. And therefore, it is quite logical that a two-sided, more reliable USB-C has replaced a one-sided, flimsy micro-USB. For the same reason, USB-C has taken root in most Ultrabox as a charging port. This is again convenient. If earlier each manufacturer had their own proprietary connector, and should the charger malfunction, it will be a problem to find the replacement, now most new smartphones, tablets and laptops can be charged by just one charger and through a one cable. But it makes no sense to include other ports into USB-C. And even Apple realized this by returning both HDMI and card reader in the MacBook Pro 2021 lineup. And this is again logical. In order to connect most monitors and TVs to a laptop via USB-C, you need to comply with as many as three conditions. The laptop should not just have a USB-C, it should support the picture output through it. You need a special USB cable capable of transferring graphic data. You need a TV with a USB-C output or an HDMI adapter. 
Thus, few people would argue that the old way of directly connecting via HDMI is much simpler and more versatile. So it turns out that the current position of USB-C, aside from the universal charging connector, looks rather shaky. But let's draw conclusions at the end of the video. Right now, let's talk about the Bluetooth wireless protocol, namely the transmission of sound through it. And here, curiously, the situation is similar to USB-C. But we'll start with a little bit of history. The modern 3.5mm headphone jack appeared already in the 50s and has hardly changed since then. So if you happen to have the legendary Cost Porter headphones from the 80s, they will work with your modern computer without any issues, giving you a warm tube sound. And such compatibility still satisfied even audiophiles. Till Apple, in the middle of the last decade, released the iPhone 7 without the jack, offering everyone to switch to using Bluetooth. And as we all know it, it worked. Now most smartphones and even some tablets have long been deprived of a 3.5mm jack and you can find more than a thousand models of various wireless headphones ranging from simple Redmi Dots for $20 to AirPods Max at the price of an Android flagship phone. Okay, since then the market has adopted wireless sound. Does that mean there are no problems with it anymore? Not even close. What can you say for sure by taking any Bluetooth headphones and a smartphone? only that the music will play and nothing more. Do you want to get high quality sound? You will have to look for both headphones and a smartphone compatible with high quality codecs. Does it remind you of anything? This is exactly the USB-C situation. A random device and a cable can only guarantee you that data will be transmitted over the USB bus and nothing more. Do you want to stream videos? Well, you remember what it takes. But back to Bluetooth. As I said, any wireless headphones and a Bluetooth device will definitely work with each other and transmit music via the SBC codec, which appeared 20 years ago, and by modern standards, its capabilities are quite miserable. Now buckle up and let the mayhem begin. No one prevents manufacturers from creating, licensing and selling their own codecs. Thus, for example, wireless APDX was born, which Qualcomm still owns and takes a fee from headphones manufacturers if they want their devices to support it. Sony has created its own LDAC codec with a focus on audio files. Huawei replied to LDAC with its own codec, LHDC. There is a free AAC codec. No, it does not belong to Apple. And even a not so famous Chinese audio file company, Hebai, has created its own UAT codec with a bitrate of up to 1200 kilobits per second. And now, let me remind you that headphones must also support the codec so that they work. So guess how many headphones makers support LDAC from Sony besides Sony itself? The answer is, I think, obvious and sad. The worst thing is that even the Bluetooth SAG consortium itself, which is developing this protocol, is in no hurry to fix this mayhem and will add fuel to the fire by introducing a new LC3 codec aiming at replacing SBC. Oh yes, and it will require a new Bluetooth 5.2 if you have the two years old Bluetooth 5.1, alas. And it is not to mention the fact that if you want to use the microphone in your wireless headphones, they will immediately switch to the headset mode and work in mono. And there is still no information about when this issue from the 2000s will be fixed. Of course, many people will now call me a hater. They would say I'm against the fashionable and cool USB-C and Bluetooth. But in fact, this is not the case. I just use them as an example of the glaring problems of modern protocols and interfaces. You can find such problems everywhere you look. The HDMI licensing administrator company responsible for this video port has not figured out HDMI 2.0 itself. Now, in fact, it does not exist. And it is included in the basic version of HDMI 2.1. But this newer interface, in its advanced version, has functions that HDMI 2.0 does not. Good luck choosing a TV. The M.2 interface generally has two different versions for SATA and NVMe SSD, which differ by keys. But the interface itself is called the same in both cases. Good luck buying an SSD that will fit into the slot, but will not work. Let us recall the mayhem with the LGA 1151 and AM4 sockets when they did not physically change, but the manufacturers limited the ability of the new CPUs to work with old boards and vice versa. Of course, users quickly figured out a way to circumvent these restrictions. As we told in a previous video, 
Wi-Fi standards are also defined as vaguely as possible, which is why you can easily get a router with support for the Wi-Fi 4 standard, the main feature of which is the support of 5 GHz networks, and it will not support this very range. Yes, you got it right. There are many such examples, and it is easy to notice one common thing here. Such a mess with the connections is a new trend, which is not even 10 years old. How did this mess with ports and interfaces happen to be? Of course, no one will give you the exact answer, but I think many people have already made an assumption. Marketeers took over engineers. We see this not only in interface and protocols, but in all electronics in general. They tried to convince us that gaming laptops heating to 100 degrees is normal, and all because marketing managers decided to make the laptop 17.5% thinner and 5.9% lighter. We are being told that the lack of a charger bundle with a smartphone makes us closer to the environment, and napkins with the logo of a bitten apple wipe the dust better than others. And it is quite possible that a similar thing happened with the USB-C. The marketing managers thought that one port for everything would be cool, and the world would be ready for it. And no one listened to the pleas of engineers who said that users were not even close to being ready for such a sharp transition. Moreover, when it turned out that the engineers were right, the return of the ports in the MacBook was presented as a new amazing feature. So what should we do as we watch the EDC defeat common sense? Only one thing carefully study what you want to buy and analyze the capabilities of the devices in question. You often stream videos from your laptop to a TV? Buy yourself a laptop with HDMI and don't worry about adapters. You listen to music in high quality from many different devices? Forget about Bluetooth. Do not fall for the tales of marketing managers. Fortunately, there is still choice and you still can buy a device where engineers still took over. This was my computer, space communications engineer Mikhail Krashen. Do not forget about the links in the description, and if you enjoyed the video, give it a like. If you did not like it, give it a dislike. If you have something to add, we are definitely ready to chat with you in the comments. I'll see you later, until next time.